Hello everyone, my name is Afshin Zaygan and I'm presenting the paper Who Do I Look Like? Determining Parent Offspring Resemblance via Gated Autoencoders. This is a joint work with Enrique Ortiz, uh, Ruben Villegas, and Dr. Mubarak Shah. In the slide on the left, you see some images of offspring, and on the right, you see their corresponding parents. We would like to ask the following questions. The first one is that, do offspring resemble their parents? And the second one is that, do offspring resemble one parent more than the other one? I'm sure that some of you have already asked this question from yourself, and it's interesting to know that these two questions have been of interest for decades, and researchers, anthropologists have been trying to find answers for these questions for many years, and there's a large diversity between the conclusion that they have made so far. And we are trying to actually look into this problem from computer point of view and use computer vision techniques to actually answer these two questions. We also like to ask two more questions. Uh, the third one is that what part of the face are more genetically inspired? And the last one is that do anthropologists study how computers learn better features or not? First, let's look at what some of the anthropologists, uh, anthropological studies on uh, child uh, parent uh, resemblance in the past. Around 25 years ago, in small experiments on six families, um, made the conclusion that there is a resemblance between parent and offspring, but there is not any differential resemblance between parent and offspring. That means that uh, children do not resemble one parent more than the other one. Almost nine years, uh, nine years later, the same experiment on 28 families uh, made the same conclusion. In 2000, uh, in a study on a larger set of families, around 160, uh, 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 made the conclusion that the parent, uh, parent and offspring, there's a resemblance between them. And also there's a differential resemblance between parent and offspring. And children resemble the mother more than the father. The same conclusion was made on another study in 2004. And in one of the recent studies that I have borrowed this table from, they also said that um, um, offspring resemble their parents, and also there is a differential resemblance between parent and offspring, and that is dependent on the age and sex of the children. Now let's look how look at the framework that we used to answer to the question that I raised uh, in the previous slides. So the backbone of our system is based on one of the recent deep learning approaches called gated autoencoders. And gated autoencoders are different from traditional autoencoders in the sense that they focus on encoding the relationship between pair of images, and they do not focus on the representation of each individual image itself. And it is also suited to our problem because here we are also interested in encoding the relationship between facial feature of parent and offspring. So we have pair of images that we are playing around with in our problem. So that's why gated autoencoders are well suited to our problems. Now let's see how do they work. First we need to know what is the input into our system. So as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, images of parent and we have images of uh, their corresponding children. So the, we, after aligning the images, we divide each, each image into patches and we use the RGB intensity values of the patches as an input to our system. So X and Y are a set of patches uh, for the parent and offspring images that we have and this is the input into our system. After having the input, we are interested in finding three set of weights in this network. The, 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 the weights U and V encode the input X and Y into a higher dimensional space um, and get the new representation P and Q. Um, then the element-wise multiplication of P and Q is used and multiplied by a weight K uh, in order to get the final uh, representation Z, which we call the mapping units here. So then uh, uh, Z actually encodes the relationship between the pair of images. Once we have the Z, uh, given Z and basis expansion of Y, we can reconstruct the input X, and that, that we call it X prime. And again, given Z and basis expansion of uh, X, we can reconstruct the input Y, that we call it Y prime. So given X y, x prime, and y prime, we can write our loss function uh, as this, which we are trying to minimize the reconstruction error uh, in here. So as I, as I mentioned, z encode the relationship between the pair of images. So one may think of um, uh, inputting related pairs, basically parent and offspring images that are from the same family and non-related pairs into the system, get their corresponding z, and put it to a classifier, let's say SVM, now you will have a classifier that can distinguish between related pairs and non-related pairs. 
But what we are proposing in this paper to do is that we are adding a fully connected network on top of the generative layer, and we are trying to train our fully connected network now. And we refer to the last layer as a discriminative layer. So what discriminative layer does is that it helps us also find the feature that better differentiate between parent and offspring, which I'm going to show in later slides how do we use this feature to actually get more information from the image patches. The loss function for the discriminative layer is shown here. As you see, we are interested in finding the set of weight T that uh, minimize the reconstruction error between the predicted label and the ground truth labels. Given the loss function for the uh, discriminative and generative layer, we can write our final loss function, which is a combination of the discriminative and generative loss function using a weight alpha. And we learned the weight alpha uh, by cross-validation on a validation set. Now let's get back to our question. You guys know, everyone knows now the system and how it works. Now let's get back to our question and for us see what is the answer to our question that we found out. The first question was that, do offspring resemble their parents? In order to answer to this question, we'll look into the identification task, which is given an offspring image and a large gallery of parent images, we are interested in finding the right match for the given query image. This actually mimics anthropologist studies. In their studies also, a human subject was shown an image of, an image of a child and also three adult images, and he or she was asked to find the right uh, parent among the three adult images. And as you can see, all the images were taken under the same condition. The subjects were asked to have neutral face expression, and also all of them were asked to look directly into the camera. So mm, uh, all the faces were front or faces in, in their data set. However, in our experiments, we have, first of all, we have a lot more images in our gallery. We have like around 1,000 images for each relationship. And the images in our data set are unconstrained images collected from web. Uh, so they have like all, all this computer vision uh, problems like illumination and pose variation, which we're dealing with. So you see the problem that we are solving here is a lot more difficult than uh, the anthropologist, but we are both interested in finding the right parents for the query image. So if you look at uh, this image, which shows the qualitative results of our system, on the top, you see the query images that was given into our system. And on the, in the bottom, you see the ranked parent images in the gallery for the given query. For example, for this one, you see the, some of the top ranked images in the gallery. The number on top of each box shows the uh, output rank of our system. And the green bounding box shows the right parent for the query image. As you can see for this example, the, the second ranked image was the right parent for that image. But in this one, for example, the one was, which was ranked 48 was the right parent. And for some images, the top rank one was actually the right parent, which shows that our system is doing a pretty good job in the identification task. Now let's look at the identification versus rank curve. If we just randomly um, rank the images into the gallery for the query image, this is what we are going to uh, get as an output. As you can see, this shows the recognition rate uh, if we just look into the top for example, 10 uh, retrieved images into the gallery. If you just look into the, let's say, top retrieved images in, in our gallery, the recognition rate for the chance is around 8%. But if you look at the output of our system for different relationships, for example, for mother-daughter, the recognition rate at rank 10 is around 25%, which is a lot more than chance. Our system was also recognition rate of our system for mother-son is around 25%. For father-daughter is around 18%. And for father son is around 19%. As you can see, our system is able to find a pattern between parent and offspring and use that pattern to do a lot better than chance. So there, there was actually a pattern, a pattern between facial feature of the parent and offspring that our system was able to find out. That's the reason that it's doing a lot better than chance. Based on this observation, we can answer to the, fir to the first question that we were raising. And the answer is that, yes, offspring resemble their parents. Now let's look at the second question. And the second question is that do offspring resemble one parent more than the other one? To answer to this question, we compare each query image uh, with uh, his or her own parents uh, in the family. For example, here, if the resemblance for father-son was more than the resemblance uh, of the score for father-daughter, we gave one vote to the father-son. Uh, father 
Uh, the experiment we did it on 100 families, and we observed that daughters resemble their mother in 80% of the time, 81% of the time. And the resemblance for father-son is more than father-daughter, and son resemble their fathers in 62% of the time. The resemblance uh, for mother-daughter is a lot more significant than resemblance for father-son, and this is also aligned with, with anthropology studies. And they were saying the same thing. They were saying that daughters resemble their mother no matter of age. But son, the resemblance between son, father, and mother actually changes. Resemblance between son and father in some of the ages are more than uh, mother and son. The third question we ask is that now we are interested to see if there are some parts of the face that are more genetically inspired. Um, we want to know like, what parts was used by our system that helped better finding the right parent for the uh, images. If you look at the score, uh, the output, and the responses of our discriminative layer for each patch and for the, and each, in each relationship, the average score for the, pa uh, the input patches uh, for father-son is shown in the image here. As you can see, the more red means the higher score, the higher response for the discriminative layer. Uh, so as you can see, this is the output of the father-son, this is the output of the father-daughter. As you can see, some areas around the eye for father-daughter was the most important area that our system used to uh, distinguish between related and non-related pairs. This is mother-son, this shows mother-daughter, and this shows the average over all the relationships. In some anthropology studies, they use um, exact 3D measurements of facial parts uh, to also find the genetic parts of the face, and there, there's, the results of their studies is shown here. As you can see, it's kind of similar with our results. Some areas around the eyes are getting high responses, and some area around the, the mouth and nose are also getting high responses. In order to compare our method with other state-of-the-art, um, we also did kinship verification. In kinship verification, you are given a pair of images, and you are interested in saying whether they, are, they belong to the same family or not. We also look into, we do a, another interesting experiment, and it is that we look, we take the anthropologist uh, studies, uh, anthropologist genetic features, and we, we are interested in saying if their studies actually help our system do better in uh, finding the right pair of images. And for doing that, we manually annotated the part of the faces that was used by an anthropologist, and we tried to weight more those parts that are more genetic. This shows actually the responses, the genetic part of the face discovered by anthropologists. And we try to wait, for example, the patches around the right eye more during the learning of uh, gated auto and quarter by repeating those patch more um, a, a, during training. So our gated auto and quarter will focus more on those patches while it's uh, learning the relationship between parent and offspring images. We also compared our method with uh, popular metric learning. Uh, like ITML, and also one of the uh, recent uh, papers that is doing kinship verification, which is which also uses a variation of metric learning methods called NRML. We also compare different components of our system, like generative and discriminative part of our system, together. We did two set of experiments um, on on two data set, Kinface W1 and Kinface W2. On Kinface W1, this is the results for different relationships, father-son, father-daughter, mother-son, mother-daughter, and this is the average over all the relationship. For NRML, this is the app where we implemented the NRML ourselves. Uh, for the generative, uh, this is the output of the system, this is the output of the generative part of the system, followed by SVM classifier. And when we uh, add uh, the genetic uh, features by anthropologists into our system and we focus more on those parts, you can see that we can improve the performance, uh, the average performance by 2%. But if we use the discriminative layer and we let computers find the patches that are more important, we see that we can further improve and we get 74.5 and outperform the other uh, methods. The performance on Kinface W2 is also shown in this table. As you can see, our discriminative layer can do a lot better than uh, other approach, including ITML and NRML. And the difference is a lot, around like 7%. And our last experiment was that we wanted to see if we can just train one 
a set of classifier of one one network for all the relationship. We don't want to have like one classifier for father son, father mother, father uh, daughter, and other relationships. So we combine all these different relationship and we just train one network. And we did the same thing for ITML and NRML, and we compared uh, them with our approach. And as you can see again, our discriminative model can outperform other methods by a significant margin. Yeah, that's it. Any question?